Prime Minister Pashinyan, um, coming back to the question I asked that the repercussions of uh, um, the war of Russia against Ukraine on, on your country. Thank you. Uh, uh, I also would like to express my gratitude to you and for organizing such a format. I agree, maybe it is a historic meeting, but it's very important to identify the content of the history that now is being created because we can have different uh, outcome, consequences or results, and I think we need to be result-oriented, and that is uh, our approach. And as far as your question is concerned, you know, uh, global instability can make things uh, in our region better. Uh, because, you know, for a long time, all international attention is concentrated uh, on Ukraine, understandably, and uh, it creates uh, new risks uh, for our region. And it's very important to keep the international uh, attention uh, to our uh, region as well, because uh, I think there are many risks uh, to be managed. What is our approach to this whole situation? We stayed uh, devoted to our democratic reform agenda, because we believe that uh, democratic reforms the uh, development of democratic institutions, rule of law, human rights, um, independent judiciary, etc., would make uh, the overall situation in our region better. And we think that it is a benefit for the whole region for us to do our part of the job. You mentioned um, also, uh, President Pashinyan, that you are helping um, in Turkey also now um, in, in the face of this horrible uh, earthquake. Do you see a perspective that between Armenia and Turkey, um, what we have been uh, um, looking for over many, many years, decades, that there is um, um, actually an improvement of, of relations. Um, you, at some stage we were close to again, you know, getting rid of the blockade. And where, where do you stand there? Is there a perspective that out of this horrible crisis, um, um, this catastrophe, humanitarian catastrophe, something good may come out in your relationship? Deciding to send uh, humanitarian aid and rescuers to Turkey uh, we had uh, humanitarian motivations only uh, because millions of people uh, suffered next to us. And, uh, but uh, in the process, we see quite positive reaction from the Turkish government. And if this step uh, will have uh, political results uh, as well, it's better. But our initial motivation, purely humanitarian, and uh, as we announced, uh, we are ready to provide as many uh, humanitarian support as it, it is in our uh, capacities, and we are ready to do that. As uh, far as political dialogue is concerned, to be honest, before the earthquake, uh, we, we had uh, political di di dialogue through the special envoys. And I believe that in reality, uh, this uh, dialogue was very important. Uh, I mean, in the creating atmosphere where, where these decisions were made. And I believe that through this humanitarian conversation and communication, maybe, maybe the opportunities for concrete uh, political uh, decisions will be higher. Especially, Minister, uh, yeah, you uh, mentioned visited Turkey uh, and some um, political uh, arrangement were mentioned there and we are ready to go forward because we believe that really uh, the establishment of diplomatic relations with Turkey and the opening of our border uh, would, uh, would be very positive, not only in terms of the, our regional situation, but uh, for international situation as well.
Now let me come to the elephant in the room, if you um, allow me. This is, of course, the, the question that President Aliyev um, um, alluded to at the very beginning, the um, war um, that started, is it two years ago already? And um, we see um, um, a, a, a situation which is um, still very critical. Um, we are not here to do any negotiations, on it. but um, of course we are, um, when you look at it, the outside, the international community, we are concerned about the um, uh, humanitarian situation and um, one looks always, as we have been looking right now with regard to humanitarian aid to Turkey, we are looking at humanitarian steps. We see the Lachin corridor that is um, seen from the outside blocked and uh, we, we um, wonder, and, and maybe, um, uh, Prime Minister, you can tell us a bit about um, maybe efforts to have some confidence building um, measures there to see that somehow the situation uh, improves. And um, um, we would, of course, all, and afterwards I would like to turn to President Aliyev again, we would, of course, like to see that through some small steps we come to a um, de escalation and come closer to a resolution of this conflict. Thank you. You're right. Uh, it's already 70 days that the Lachin Corridor is blocked and uh, now unfortunately we have a humanitarian crisis in Nagorno-Karabakh and uh, uh, energetic uh, crisis as well uh, because electricity supplies uh, to Nagorno-Karabakh uh, have been uh, uh, shut down and uh, the gas supplies as well uh, have been shut down and uh, we counted and during the uh, last 70 days the gas supplies were cut uh, at least 10 times uh, and it is the problem that should be addressed and uh, our position is that uh, uh, in the trilateral uh, statement from 9 November 2020 we have uh, very uh, precise provisions connected with uh, Lachin Corridor and uh, according to that uh, statement uh, it is the uh, obligation of the uh, Azerbaijan and uh, uh, Russian peacekeepers to keep Lachin Corridor operable but now unfortunately we have totally different situation and uh, uh, I meant uh, Lachin Corridor as well, saying that international uh, attention should be kept on this situation because we are afraid that continuation of, uh, of uh, this situation uh, can cause unturnable uh, humanitarian uh, consequences for Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh. Now, we, as I said, we cannot replace negotiations here, but I would like to give the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Pashinyan, a, 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 a possibility to react to what he heard from uh, uh, President uh, Aliyev. Thank you. About Nagorno-Karabakh, uh, you know, President mentioned a trilateral statement, and on that trilateral statement we have provision. And we have Nagorno-Karabakh on trilateral statement, and the, we have signature of the president of Azerbaijan under this document. And we have Lachin Corridor that should be uh, freely operable. And by the way, according to that uh, trilateral statement, out of control of Azerbaijan, and it is according to the signature of President of Azerbaijan. And recently, you know, some um, uh, Armenians' uh, uh, children from Nagorno-Karabakh, they uh, tried to travel by bus uh, through Lachin Corridor, and they were stopped, and some Azerbaijani persons with masks uh, intruded into bus and the children there were screaming uh, and that was the last attempt of uh, the uh, Armenians on Nagorno-Karabakh to uh, free, freely uh, commute through uh, Lachin Corridor. 
President Aliyev mentioned uh, destroyed mosques. You know, uh, I would like to say that in 2017, in Azerbaijan, several mosques were destroyed for building new roads. And President Aliyev mentioned that uh, several, I, I don't know how many thousand mosques uh, that uh, were destroyed. And by the way, in the Soviet time, in the Soviet time, in Azerbaijan, approximately 1,560 mosques were destroyed. And that usual, it, it was the usual thing for Soviet Union. In Soviet time, churches uh, were destroyed, mosques were destroyed, and you know, Armenians of uh, Nagorno-Karabakh, they, they shouldn't pay uh, the debts from the Soviet time. And you know, it's very important, uh, it's very important. It is very dangerous narrative because I'm afraid uh, um, uh, sometime uh, there is an impression that Azerbaijan want to, uh, to give some religious context to this whole situation. It is very dangerous. There is no any religious context in the, uh, in the conflict. And the proof is that, uh, that we have a very good, uh, and by the way, in our country, we have a Muslim minority. And we have, uh, in our country, acting mosque. And, uh, and uh, uh, that is the re reality. And you know the, the wording of Azerbaijan, you, w what is concerning? Uh, using the almost offensive wording, capitulation, etc. You know, from a side, it can be impression that now Azerbaijan, and uh, that is uh, maybe reality, that Azerbaijan adopted a revenge policy. You know, revenge policy, and maybe, uh, maybe uh, that is the policy of Azerbaijan. But as, uh, as uh, it was mentioned, we have very complicated history. And I, I just said, yes, maybe it is historical meeting, but for what purpose we want to use this? For inflaming intolerance, hate, aggressive rhetorics in our region or in opposite. We want to use this platform for make, making things better. We think that this platform vote to be used for constructive purposes. Of course, we can now tell many stories of enmity but what is the meaning of our leadership? To deepen that enmity or to use our capacities, our authorities, our mandates. I'm proud that I've been able, our government was able, even after the devastating war, to have free democratic elections in our country that was worldwide acknowledged as free, democratic, and transparent, and competitive. And as I said, from our point of view, is the, the solution is democracy, the solution is transparency, the solution is dialogue, the solution is respect for all countries in our region. And we are ready to, to work to that di direction. Thank you. Thank you very much. The question to the Prime Minister of Armenia is, uh, you mentioned a couple of times that collective treaty, uh, security defense uh, treaty organization is not very productive at the moment and, and raised this issue that you might be, Armenia might be leaving it. So could you dwell a bit more on these prospects? Well, uh, you know, and uh, it was public and transparent, uh, we have uh, some concerns connected uh, 
with the CSTO and we raised uh, those issues with our partners uh, and uh, actually uh, we made it public and we are working uh, and the concerns are there uh, in the place and we are working to address all the issues that and all the questions and concerns that we have.